Well, we're back with the breakfast and at this point we'll be looking at health. I mean, it's been reported and believed that health is wealth. Well, health experts and officials in recent health dialogue session that was held in the FCT said that to make the primary health care work, the federal government must ensure adequate welfare and a remuneration re of service providers at the grassroots. As the Nigerians plan to elect a new set of leaders in 2023, they are urged to make issues of health security and financing key subjects of conversations in their interactions with candidates. The complex and fragmented institutional arrangements between the local, state and federal governments constrain the delivery of public health services in Nigeria. There's also a constraint uh, for the primary health care delivery uh, as well as other sectors. Stakeholders also noted that there are no adequate resources to sustain the available doctors and healthcare providers, and this, is a, this needs to be addressed. Um, that's why you have a lot of people who are moving away uh, in a term that we call the Jackpot Syndrome. In an adequate, also inadequate manpower is also concerned for the health sector. According to the Nigerian Medical Association, the NMA, there are 110,000 registered doctors in previous years, but as of April 2022, the number of doctors had reduced to 55,000. And joining us to discuss for that is Dr. Nesochi Okereke, Okeke Ibokwe, who is a health expert. She joins us this morning from the US. Uh, it's good to have you join us, Nesochi. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I'd like you to talk about this. Uh, we, it's very important that and very uh, commendable that we have health experts in Nigeria sharing concerns about the primary health care. But if you look at the primary health care, now one of the issues in financing is that the system and the structure is fragmented. So local government is the third tier of government, but the local government is not really independent of the state government. And so the local government has been left underdeveloped. Now, up until recent time, you still have uh, lawmakers in the different parts of the state who have rejected the autonomy and financial administration for local government. So how can we uh, achieve healthcare security with all of this? The infrastructure um, when it comes to healthcare in Nigeria, as you stated, is extremely, extremely fragmented. We need to focus on certain aspects that need to be strengthened. There's usually this looming triad of three problems when it comes to healthcare in Nigeria, and that encompasses the following access to healthcare, affordable healthcare, and quality healthcare. So, what we need at this point is to have a leadership is accountable for not only improving health policy, but improving funding when it comes to these aspects of um, fortifying the healthcare um, sector. One point that needs to really be focused on, as you've mentioned, is what we call primary um, healthcare, preventive healthcare. The World Health Organization actually had a call to action to Nigeria recently to focus on these on this specific element of healthcare to fortify the healthcare system in the country. Now, what does primary healthcare or preventive healthcare actually look like? When we're talking about preventive healthcare, we are talking about every Nigerian having the possibility to have annual health checkups, which means that you are seeing a qualified doctor on an annual basis to test and screen for age-specific health issues and concerns. So screening would include screening for blood pressure issues, and screen for issues with di for diabetes, screen for issues um, having to deal with cholesterol. We're also doing um, cancer screening as well, um, based on age, age-appropriate cancer screenings that might encompass um, breast cancer screening, uh, cervical cancer screening, colon cancer screening. And what research has shown um, in various um, countries, when there is this focus on preventive care, this ultimately translates into improved health outcomes for the nation. 
it also becomes cost effective because if you are preventing disease before it spirals out of control, there's less money that has to be um, placed into treatment. So the overall goal is ensuring that we have these practices in place in Nigeria so that there, so there is um, access to improved care for all Nigerians. So um, I, I like to put this back to you. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the way it's been structured in Nigeria is that you have government as a three tier. So you have the federal government, you have the state government, and then you have uh, the local government. Now the local government should be responsible for, uh, you know, the healthcare, primary healthcare. That's, that's what it should be, okay? The secondary, uh, you know, should be that consent of the state government. And then, of course, the tertiary should be the concern. But however, uh, the local government would need the support of the state and the federal. But my concern is, now that the autonomy for and financial administration of local government has been rejected in the constitutional review process, how then can, you know, the people push for the security of the healthcare in Nigeria. So how can um, the people push for security of healthcare in Nigeria? Guess what, there's an election coming up. You have the opportunity to vote for leadership that will actually be accountable for and listen to the needs of the people. You have to take a look and see which leader you believe is going to actually adequately address these issues. Um, four years ago, in the 2019 um, election, prior to that, um, I wrote this article of Vote for Your Health, actually um, illuminating some of these items that need to be brought to light to our And guess what? To date, some of these um, action items have not occurred. So health policy needs to really be reviewed and really needs to be strengthened, but we need leadership that is actually going to take action. A lot of the problems that you are bringing to light really is going to be transformed when you have those that focus on um, healthcare as a major issue in this country. Of course, we have many issues in Nigeria. Yes, there's fuel scarcity, there's Naira scarcity, there's overall insecurity, but guess what? The issue with this weakened, fractured, healthcare system is one that has been ongoing for years. What we do not want to happen is four years from now, we're still talking about the same problems and issues. So again, this all comes down to leadership and it all comes down to everyone um, really making that effort to focus on voting for those leaders, for that leader, I should say, that will bring about this form of change in, this, in the healthcare system. Well, um, i also like you to uh, speak to the fact that if the people uh, have to probably vote for, I mean, you say, we're saying that a vote for, you know, health is very important in the coming elections, and uh, it's still very dicey. I mean, I doubt that we can probably achieve that, you know, now, because uh, if you say we're going to get to another uh, constitutional period, a process where uh, laws are being made to enable the people uh, get what they should get. Now we have actually passed that process. Just a few days before the elections, one is just wondering what we can achieve. But I'd like you to also speak to our budget allocation as well. Over the years, we, we seem not to have allocated enough, you know, to meet up uh, the needs in the healthcare sector. And also, if we're still talking about the elections, we still have a lot of persons who will be on their way out, who are already on their way out. The number of doctors, uh, those who should attend to uh, patients in Nigeria every other day, uh, you have a doctor or medical practitioner leaving the country. So how can we also address all of this within uh, this period of the elections? So there are multiple um, issues that you have brought, brought to light. Um, one of them being, um, funding that is going into the healthcare sector. Um, ultimately, more funding does have to be um, placed on healthcare in the country. But another important issue is what you alluded to, the Nigeria brain drain. We have a lot of um, Nigerian doctors that leave to go abroad to practice um, in the US, in the UK, elsewhere, 
for various reasons. Why is that? I speak to my colleagues in Nigeria all the time, and they bring to light some of the actual issues that occur with the practice of medicine in the country. Um, one of them being um, one of them being having the adequate resources to actually do what a doctor has to do to take care of their patients. We have this lack of resources that does not enable a doctor to really do the best that they can do for patients. There's a scarcity of these resources that just uh, translates into poor health outcomes. Um, I want you to think about maybe somebody in your life, all of you, or somebody in your life that has um, suffered an issue with their health in Nigeria, and it could have been prevented. It could have been prevented maybe if we had adequate resources, maybe if we had more doctors on board to take care of the patient, to provide quality care. All these things need to be um, really taken a look closely at. One issue I have to also mention that um, some of my colleagues that still practice in Nigeria tell me about um, is even getting the salary that they're supposed to be guaranteed. There are some doctors out there that they will practice, take care of patients. They don't have the resources that they require to do that good job of taking care of patients. But at the end of the day, salaries that are promised are not given to them. So it lends for one to think, you know, what are they still doing in Nigeria if they don't even have the salary that they are required, if they don't even have the resources that should be available to every doctor. So there also needs to be a focus on retaining quality, um, qualified doctors in the country that do want to continue to practice here if they are afforded um, the opportunity that doctors everywhere else in the world um, obtain. So that's another issue to consider as well. So um, let's talk about the role of the private sector. We understand that in developed climes, uh, just like where you are, uh, you have the private sector involvement, you know, in healthcare delivery and, of course, primary healthcare and what have you. Uh, what exactly can the private sector do and how can they key into developing, you know, the health sector in Nigeria? Um, so private sector, there's a lot that um, can be done. Um, there needs to be um, kind of a mutual um, workforce with private and public sector to collaborate to allow for certain health initiatives to occur. And not just in regards to preventive health, but certain areas that affect both private and public um, sector when it comes to things like disease outbreak. One of the major issues that we um, typically see, um, irrespective, of um, preventive health is um, disease outbreak. We know, especially here in Nigeria, that there's always going to be some disease outbreak um, of some sort. We've had disease outbreaks with lots of fever. Of course, we are still in a global pandemic um, with um, COVID-19. And when you think about that, we need to make sure that we actually have both private sector and public sector unifying in order to strengthen um, the efforts to ensure that we have adequate epidemiological surveillance, that we have the resources when it comes to certain vaccinations, and that we promote education amongst the people to understand what some of these disease outbreaks really mean. Um, it's never a matter of if there is going to be another um, outbreak of um, some infectious disease. It's a matter of when. So considering that we know that there's excuse me, always a potential for disease outbreak in the future, it comes down to the collaboration of both public and private. Okay. So yes, uh, on the 25th of, uh, I mean, I know you've spoken to this, but on the 25th of February, hopefully, and on the 11th of March, Nigerians would actually uh, be going out to the polls to cast their vote for who uh, becomes the next president precisely on the 25th. And of course, the 11th governors and state house of assembly uh, representative. I'd like you to speak to that. 
Now, we are grappling with a lot of issue of vote buying. It's very easy. I mean, it's a major issue in the sense that people would always want to, you know, uh, take money or whatever it is uh, just to cast their vote for whoever is going to bid for it. And uh, how can that be, you know, how can we get rid of that, especially when we're thinking about improving the health sector? So I'd like you to speak to that in, in a few seconds. Um, I mean, unfortunately, there is always that element of potential corruption when it comes to um, the elections. And I understand and I hear what you're saying about um, vote buying of certain individuals. But I think um, every voter really needs to look at the big picture. You know, look deep into your heart and think about what you want the future of Nigeria to look like, what you want the legacy of this country to be. Are you going to be a Nigerian that is um, basically ingrained in these kinds of actions of vote buying and um, potential um, corrupt activity just to get an immediate gain of some sort? Or are you going to look towards the future of your life, of your family, of the health of yourself and all the individuals in the nation to hopefully, hopefully transform the landscape of things in Nigeria so that future generations to come will ultimately note that at this time, this point in time of the election of 2023, that steps and strides were made to have a better health sector in this country, to have better health care for every single Nigerian. Health care essentially is a human right, and no one should really um, impede that ability for every Nigerian to be taken care of when it comes to their health. All right, uh, Dr. Nesochi, OKK Ibokwe, we have to go now. Thank you so much for making our time to be with us. We do appreciate your thoughts this morning on The Breakfast. And of course, we look forward to sharing more of your thoughts as we proceed in 2023. Thank you for having me. All right, then do have a great day. We have been speaking with a health expert all the way from the United States of America, Dr. Nesochi, OKK Ibokwe. And uh, that's the size of it. It's important that you uh, vote for your health security as you go out to cast your vote please and please the temptation might be high to sell your vote but please do not because you know it will come back at you make sure that you cast your vote for those who have your interest in different sectors of the economy and having policies that will protect your interests as well and that's the size of it we'll join the newsroom at nine o'clock for the news brief but if you missed out on a part of the conversation you can be part of it via social media and Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and subscribe to a YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Ibuko. We'll do this tomorrow. Have a great morning.